Hello, welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a super fiendish rated puzzle from the Times. Um, this is the hardest puzzle that they publish um, as a rule. Um, and I think these are normally doable with just good technique. So we're going to really work on our technique here and see how we get on. Um, I think we should also congratulate Kota Morinishi, uh, who have done a number of videos about on the site over the last few months on winning the 2018 World Sudoku Championship yesterday. Um, so Mark's just back from Prague and will certainly be trying to cover um, at least some of the interesting puzzles that appeared in the World Championship over the coming weeks. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at this. I can't remember how the... Um, oh, I see. I can't remember the, how the interface worked on, on this, but that's how we do it. So you can see I'm going to make little pencil marks in 3x3 three three blocks if I can restrict a number's position to exactly two places. So I can only put a 7 in these two cells here because of this 7 and therefore I allow myself pencil marks just to demonstrate that. That fixes the position of the 7 here and allows us to place more pencil marks down at the bottom there. See more pencil mark sevens in this block because of this seven and this seven. And I think that's all we can do with sevens. We can place a two there though, so let's do that. Um, ah, and there's a first bit of nice logic that we get from using the pencil marks in this fashion. Let's look at this two. This means that the two in this three by three block is forced into one of these four squares. Now you may say, well, what use is that? Well, it is a little bit useful, because if we look over here at this 3x3 three three block, we have a 2 there. And that 2 is forcing the 2 down into one of these four squares. Now, the thing in common here is that both 2s are appearing in the same row of the grid. They're both locked into rows 8 and 9. So there can't be any more 2s in rows 8 and 9, otherwise we'd have we definitely have a conflict. If there was a 2 here, for example, we'd have a 2 in row 9 and a 2 in row 9 here. So, so there clearly cannot be any 2s in these four positions in this 3x3 three three block. And that allows us to make two more pencil marks that wouldn't initially be obvious. Um, now, what more can we do? We can pencil mark some 5s up there, I can see. Um, we can... This digit has to be an 8. Nothing clever about that. It's just forced. That's got to be an 8, therefore. Let's pencil mark some 8s up at the top. So the middle row of the grid is now 4, 5, and 9. And that means this has got to be a 4. So that means we can do 5s and 9s into these two positions. Can we do anything more there? Not seeing anything immediately. Let's put the sixes down in the corner here. And four, five, and nine again missing from these three cells, which allows us to pencil mark the fives, but nothing more, or at least nothing more I'm seeing as I'm staring at this, which of course is it's always slightly difficult to be sure you're not missing anything obvious when you're live solving. It's definitely not the most efficient way of doing it. But ah, there we go again. We've got exactly the same thing we have with twos down here with sixes now. So I've managed to force a six into one of these two positions. Look at this six down here. And this six, in fact, it's forcing a six into one of those two positions. So we have this same arrangement in rows one and two, where we know there can't be any sixes now over in this 3x3 three three block in rows 1 and 2. So we can actually pencil mark two sixes down there like that. Um, okay, which is nice. Doing this in a slightly haphazard way, I am conscious of that because I'm not sort of going through the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in any order, which I probably ought to do. But let's look at 3s now over here. Two threes here. That means that we can Pencil mark threes, and the moment this sort of thing happens, 
where we've got this six poking into this this box here. This obviously can't be a six because then we would be left with only one cell in which we need to place two numbers, the three and the eight. So we can eliminate the six from this block and the six will have to go into this square here which gives us this number as well. Let's just check we can't do anything more. We can place little fours into those two squares. Um, okay, we've got fours here and here. So there must be a four in one of these. Ah, so we've got a very similar thing. It's very interesting, this puzzle. We've done the same thing now three times. You can see the fours are locked into columns seven and eight in this three by three block. And the fours here are locked into columns seven and eight as well. So again, in this 3x3 three three block, there cannot now be a 4 here or here. The 4 has to go in this position, and that's really useful. It not only gives us a 4, uh, but it immediately gives us this 5 as well. And it gives us the 9, that's the only thing left to do. And there's going to be loads more we can unwind over here now, because this has to be a 4. This has to be a 9. Oops, that's got to be a 9. Let's tidy up the notation here. And we're looking, I think this must be a five now, and this is going to be the seven. So five and seven, like that. You can see immediately we can look down the grid. We have a five and a five. We're going to be able to pencil mark fives and create a one five pair in this bottom box. When you get this sort of thing, immediately check because. Because we're now eliminating all of the open positions from column one in this three by three block, we should immediately be looking upwards. What else can we do? You can see this seven. This seven is forcing that seven over onto the right hand side there. Uh, we can now pencil mark eight using the same principle. We can't pencil nines and not seeing what else, but we can see we need 7, 8 and 9 now into these three positions. We have a 7 here and a 7 here, so we can place a 7 at the top and we can, pen oh in fact we can place the 9 as well, we can spot the 9 there immediately, it's a 9 and 8 like that. This unwinds the 8 and the 3 over here. I suspect we're making reasonable progress now, and sometimes there's a sting in the tail with these super fiendish puzzles, but um, I think our notation has, has proved really efficient uh, here so far. Um, what else do we need down here? We need a five. Uh, can't see how to do that. Fives. So one and two locked down here somehow. No ones and twos in the top of the grid to help us limit the positions of the ones and twos. So we're going to have to go back have a look elsewhere. Two, three, four, and six here. So this is a four. Which means this is a four. One, two, like that. This has to be a two now. Two, that means we can place twos into these two positions. Look. Four, four, so this has to be a four down here. Get rid of our pencil mark four. Still got these numbers one and two down here that we can't quite resolve. Oh, two threes here, so we could probably have put that three in ages ago. And three, that means this is the eight here. means we can pencil mark eights into these two positions. We need to still place a nine in this block and there's only one place it can go now and that's here. And that's going to tidy up the whole of the bottom left hand corner. Nine, two and seven like this. Seven, seven. Let's tidy up. Make sure that we don't lose track of our new pencil marks. You can see this is nine and five unwinding itself now. Oops, I want to put a nine in please. Nine. Five, five and one. 
and 212, sort of offsetting positions now in these positions here, look. And then we can just resolve the threes, three, three, this is going to have to be a three. And that means, can we place the three here now? I think we can, which means this must be the six. Six and five. Let's be a two, two, one, one, two. Well, and this is one of the advantages of the pencil mark method, is that once you do start to get a few answers into the grid, um, you can really make progress uh, very, very efficiently. So 1 and 9 now over here, look. And what numbers are we left with? We need to place an 8 somewhere, so that's got to be here. And that means that this, hopefully, if everything's worked out, should be a 1. So that's how to solve a super fiendish puzzle. And that's why we recommend using um, this notation, because it's uh, seriously, seriously powerful. Um, and it can solve well, even the hardest puzzle you'll see in the Times newspaper in a little over 10 minutes. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.